Hi, I'm David. I'm an operate Country Whatnot Gardens outside of Rochester, Indiana, which is about an hour south of the Michigan State Line. I grow 25 different species and varieties of bamboo, including Phyllostachys nuda directly behind me. In the last video, you might have noticed that the three larger bamboo species that I grow were left out of that video, and that was intentional because I wanted to devote more time to them. Uh, Phyllostachys nuda here has decently sized new culms. And they're past shoot stage now, uh, almost. They're in the larger phase of it, at least the latter phase of it. And um, remember, bamboo shoots emerge out of the ground full diameter. So if you were going to be harvesting these to eat, they would have been this big around when they, when they come out of the ground. They only uh, telescope out. They emerge full diameter. So new to is one of the species that I count as a food or utility purpose because you could use these combs to build fences as well. Um, although Phyllostachys parvifolia does look like it's going to surpass Nuda this year. Here are the new shoots on Phyllostachys parvifolia. Now they're also past harvesting size. This one in particular right back here, you can see it's getting uh, some decent size to it. And again, they emerge out of the ground full diameter. They only telescope out longer. But you can see that if you were harvesting this for, for the table, this would be a more decent sized shoot than uh, most of the other species that I have been growing. Um, I don't know how tall these are going to get. I would think decently tall. I would like to think 20 feet. I don't know. Parvifolia is known for being a uh, wider diameter bamboo in ratio to its height than many other species. So it's a little bit more chonky. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to see it finally sizing up now after 10 years. So it's getting there. Um, there's things I could have done to have made it go faster. I could have gave it more fertilizer, thrown more manure, more urea, more green compost, all that stuff on it. But um, I didn't. So this is pretty much natural. I did give it urea a couple of times when I thought about it. Um, if you do put urea on bamboo, you have to do it in the very early spring before the shoots come out of the ground, late February through mid-March and within 24 hours of rain so that your granular urea doesn't all gas off its nitrogen as ammonia and be lost and useless basically before it gets into the ground to bind with the soil particles. Anyway, this is mostly natural. I did give it urea a couple times over those 10 years. Not a lot, not every year. But you can see it's spreading a little bit. Not a lot. Um, anywhere between four and six feet out from the previous growth. Parvifolia does seem to spread shorter than the general rule of thumb for most bamboo species, which is as far out from the edge of the grove as the tallest culm is high with live roots before it needs green growth to photosynthesize to sustain those rhizomes and produce growth further out. Um, you can see the new division that I put over here a few years ago is sending some shoots out there, but I'm really pleased with the size of the shoots on this this year, and hopefully it continues to uh, size up in the years to come. This is more of a mid shooting season species, whereas Nuda is, is earlier. You saw the greater development on the Nuda Grove that I, that I showed previously to show how much sooner those shoots came up in comparison to Parvifolia here. Um, even later in the shooting season is Phyllostachy satra vaginata, which we'll take a look at next. Okay, here we are at the Phyllostachy satra vaginata grove, uh, incense bamboo, and it's a late season shooter. It comes up after Nuda, after Parvifolia, you can see it's just starting here. Something nipped the top of this one, probably a deer sampling it. But it's not that big of a shoot. Uh, Atrovaginata is known for being a little bit more uh, slender in ratio to its height than Parvifolia. Uh, it's more so uh, probably on par with uh, Nuda in its diameter to height ratio, although Atrovaginata is probably uh, going to get a little bit taller for us than Nuda. You can see over here some 
Smaller shoots on Atrovaginata, smaller diameter, a little bit taller. These are shooting here on the outskirt of the grove where the sun has warmed the soil sooner. On the interior of the grove, there's no activity yet. If, like last year, the larger shoots would come up from in there. Now, if I had to choose just one species to plant for food or utility purposes here in zones five or six out of the species we can choose from for our growing zone, currently I would say Phyllostachys parvifolia. Um, it might change later as Atrovaginata uh, matures and comes along. Atrovaginata does grow a larger footprint close to twice as fast as parvifolia. Um, this is a decent sized grove for 10 years, the footprint wise. It's still getting taller and gaining diameter every year. But obviously if you had the space, I would say plant all three because with Nuda you get your early shoots, parvifolia you get your mid shooting season shoots, and then of course Atrovaginata extends that season uh, by, a, by a couple weeks anyway. Uh, into the later shooting season. So you would have a larger uh, window for harvesting shoots. And for utility purposes, I would say currently parvifolia, just because it's, it seems to be sizing up better than Atrovaginata currently. If you did grow all three, you'd want to plant them 80, 80 feet apart on center and maintain mode space or disc between or something like that. But if you were harvesting for the table or for the farmer's market or to sell to restaurants or something, I would say go for all three. It's not going to be a quick proposition. It's like I say, these groves are 10 years old and just starting to produce. So it's not overnight like people think it is with bamboo. It has to get a root system down first. Yes, the shoots grow quickly once they're up, but you've got time invested in putting this root system down before you can expect sizable growth. Um, like I say, there's things you can do, fertilizing root regimens and things you can do to speed that along, but it's still going to take time. You could mow between these. You could, if you plant all three species to keep them separate, you could mow between them. You could disc between them. Uh, disking, if you choose that, that's got to be carefully timed. Midsummer to, to late summer when those rhizomes are running, you could disc that up a couple times in that time period. There are three really nice species. Uh, I believe uh, Parvifolia is currently my favorite. We'll see how that transpires as time goes along. If you enjoyed this look at the three larger bamboo species and what they're currently doing, and I'll give an update as it goes along and progresses into the shooting season to show its updates as well. But if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, please give me a like, subscribe, and share. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, thank you for stopping by and take care.